you're working with gels and creating stylized portraits, you're gonna find that dialing in your color and pose can be quite tricky. So in this tutorial, I have six simple steps on how to help you get there inside of Lightroom Classic. My name is Pi. I've been fortunate to create multiple successful companies in the photography space. I'm a photographer, but even more so, I would say I'm an educator and frameworks person. My specialty, making complex subjects easy for you to master, right here on Adorama TV. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. Now, recently, we did this photo shoot for SRL Lounge, where with my friend Kiara, we're using roto lights to basically create a gelled look. These are constant lights slash flashes. We'll link up that tutorial so you guys can check it out. But basically, what we're going for is a very stylized color grade. And in particular, what we're kind of aiming at is starting with a certain color scheme. In this particular case, we're going for this teal and kind of red look. We're basically looking on opposite sides of the color wheel to kind of create a unique look, right? So it's kind of this teal more so on the skin and a little bit more red in the background. And now we're inside of post and we get this raw file, right? Well, where we're trying to go is this final image. And this is the actual final edited image. And you might think that most of this is Photoshop, but it's not. Most of this is actually in the color grade and I wanna show you how to get there. So I'm gonna break this down. Let's go back to this particular image. And if you'd like to get the exercise file for this, we will link it up uh, in a link below so you guys can jump on SR Lounge and actually download the exercise file for this particular uh, tutorial, just because it's quite specialized. Okay, so with this, what I like to do, step one is I like to start with temperature and tint. And you'll find that this is very difficult to actually dial in camera. Uh, in camera, I usually aim for something that that is kind of neutral, around 5,500 Kelvin or whatever it needs to be just to get something that shows the the teal, the green, and the background the way that it, that it actually is to my eyes, right? But once we're into post, we can do a lot of different things here. So with the raw file, I can press W and click on the suit, which I know is her black suit is, is a neutral black. And what it's gonna do is actually color correct for the green, uh, for that teal color uh, on the skin, right? Teal is kind of more green and blue together, right? When it does that, all you see is the red in the background. I could also click in the background and what's gonna happen is it's gonna neutralize the red and that's really gonna show more of the blue tones that come out in the, in the light itself. Now, each of these could be its own look, right? We could actually make it a look to go for this. We could also make it a look to go for this but I wanna go somewhere in between where we actually see the greens and blues on the skin and where we see the reds in the background like this. So instead, what I'm gonna do is reset this out so it's back to where it was. What I like to do is I'll often start with tint. I'll actually work to get kind of some magentas into the skin tone right here. Then I'm gonna actually warm up the image until I see some of the greens as well as some of the reds start to appear in the background. And you might go, well, that's still a long way off from where I wanna go. Well. That's what the other five steps in this workflow are going to be about. So step two in my workflow is, and by the way, you can take these tips and kind of rearrange and do it however you like. This is just how I like to approach, you know, images like this. The next thing I like to do is I like to go to tone. And what I'm specifically looking at is my highlights and my whites. See, I want to reveal the, the highlights in the scene. And I don't necessarily want to brighten everything in the image. What I want to do is actually control just the face. And so what I'm gonna do is actually add whites and add highlights to kind of really reveal the, the, the skin and the highlights on the skin. What we're also gonna do is actually raise the blacks a little bit. The shadows are, are, there's actually not much shadow in this image. You'll notice that if I actually pull the shadows up and down, there's not a lot that happens because most of the image is kind of confined to either highlights or complete blacks, right? Highlights and whites or blacks. So. You know, we can make a subtle tweak to shadows. It's it's just not gonna do too much. I'm gonna raise the blacks up a little bit. And from here, it's pretty good. I'm gonna make a little adjustment to clarity just to pull it down um, a, a small amount, and, and that's good. So what we've done in this step is basically just reveal the, the skin, okay? We've revealed like the tone of the image and the, the highlights and the shadows and, and whatnot. From here, this is where I like to jump down to hues. And what we're gonna do is actually go down to the HSL and we're gonna divide things out. So usually we're kind of looking at the HSL from this view, right? Where we're looking at everything. I'm actually gonna focus specifically on each category as we go through because each one is, is, is gonna have a very specific control when it comes to stylized portraits. 
the first thing that I want you to do is go to hue and actually play with your colors. So if you want your red to be more orange, to be more magenta, you can do that. If you want your skin tones to take on a different look, what you're going to do is click the eyedropper tool, mouse over, and watch. I can actually take that teal and I can shift it more towards the blue side or I can shift it more towards the green side, right? Either way, it doesn't really matter where you want to take it. It allows you to kind of lean into whatever color grade you're going for. So I'm going to actually bring this a little bit more towards the greens. Okay, so it kind of jumps and stands off from the, the reds in the image. Then what I'm going to do on the red side is I'm actually going to make them a little bit more red. I'm actually going to bring them up towards the greens as well. So what's kind of happening is I'm adding a little bit of like more uh, of the, the green tones into the reds. I'm pulling it towards this orange and towards the green side, and I'm pulling the greens kind of down towards the, the yellow side. Like you'll notice that the aqua is actually going down towards the yellow. So this is kind of pulling together the colors a bit, right? When you're done with that, then now you're going to go to saturation. So this is step four. Step four is to go to saturation. And this is where you're going to say, OK, you know, I'd like the reds to be more intense. So I'm actually going to dial those up a little bit. And for the aquas, the greens, I actually want to tone those down a little bit so I can bring those up. But instead, I'm actually going to pull them down and reveal just a little bit more of the natural skin color underneath. OK, we're going to go to about right here. Same thing. Step five is luminance. So really the big thing when it comes to stylized portraits is we're treating HSL almost like the full control over the image, right? Because we have these unique colors in the image, we can manipulate the image from specifically those colors. So for luminance, I can go to the reds and I can say, oh, do I want to pull the reds down or do I want to make them a little more bright? I actually want them to be a little more bright in this case. And here, I also want to bring the aquas up a little bit. I want to really kind of reveal the skin. And I like that. Now, maybe down here in the purples, like the magentas, I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to leave the reds up, but I'm going to bring those purples and magentas down. And I'm also actually going to go to the hue and I'm going to take those magentas and we're going to shift just the magentas towards the red side a little bit more. Okay, kind of bring everything more towards this side. So we're kind of pulling those all together a little bit. For saturation, I might even decide to like bring the magentas down. So it kind of just reveals more of the reds we've kind of shifted it but also toned it down a little bit which i like and look at this what's interesting is just with those adjustments if you actually go now to the final image you can start to see like okay we can actually get very close to whatever look we want and for this particular edit i just kept everything on the skin tones more blue so if we actually go back to the skin tones and back to the hue the only difference was for my edit I was like, ah, I was kind of in the mood to just leave it a little more on the blue side, right? So if I pump this back up to here and I raise the luminance a little bit, okay, you'll start to notice that those skin tones actually blend almost identically now, right? So it's deciding kind of in that moment, what do you feel like in terms of, in terms of the overall look and that style? But the fun thing about this is being able to control all those colors independently because they're such distinct colors that we're adding to the image. And I kind of, for this one, I kind of like this to be a little more on the green side. I don't know. I, I feel like it has a, a great look. Now, from there, you can take it further. This is where I'd say step six is to fine tune. If you want to add additional color grading, you totally can. Like if we wanted to put some oranges into the highlights, right? I'm going to make this uh, a little more easy to see. If we want to put a little bit of like oranges in the highlights, what do we want to do to kind of blend? We totally can. And what I would say is lean into the colors that you're already using. So if we're already, you know, using kind of the, the greens for the skin tone, what I might do is like put a little bit more into that side. Or if I just want to warm it up a little bit, I might go to the opposite side and warm the highlights a little bit. This is preferential, but I usually would end up sticking with colors that are already in the image. So with your oranges, those are already there um, in terms of your, your red channel and whatnot. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to leave the, the color grading off. What I am going to do is for my fine tuning adjustment, I'm going to jump up to the tone curve because one thing that we often forget is that we have multiple arenas that we can control color. We have the HSL. It's the first thing that we think about. We also have the color grading. That's probably the second thing that we think about. But we don't realize that we also have the tone curve. And from the tone curve, I could make adjustments to each specific channel. So if I just want the reds to be kind of pumped up, I can do that. And it's cool because I can do it in certain areas of the image. So I can go to the highlights of the image. I can say, you know what? I do want to see more um, of the reds in the highlights. And I actually want to drop off when it comes to more of the shadows. I want to bring this down a little bit. And in the highlights and the greens, I do want to see some 
but I want it to be a little more subtle. So I'm going to leave those down here. And I really don't want to see too much of those highlights in the greens when it comes to shadow. So I'm going to start pulling them out of the shadows by just kind of lift uh, by dropping it on the shadow side. And if you want to constrain movement, by the way, when you're adding a pin, you just hold down shift and it'll constrain it to uh, just going up and down. On the blued side, same thing. I can play with this. What does it look like if I remove some of the blues versus add more blues, right? And I kind of like it where it is. If anything, I might actually just pull down the blues by like one little notch and maybe leave it up a little bit in just the highlights right there. So we get to a really fun place with just these basic color grading adjustments right inside of Lightroom. And I want you to see that. I want you to see how close we essentially got. We, we went back to that green look, but how close you're getting to that Photoshop look with just uh, Lightroom Classic and just our color adjustments. And look at where we started from too. This was the baseline for where we had our image, right? And we went to here, which is pretty wild. The other thing too is, like I said, if you wanted to, you could go and color grade for the background and check this out. I'm also going to color grade for the shirt for one. Okay. So on this one, I'm going to go back to the skin. Let's go back down here to hue on the skin and I'm going to tweak this. So maybe I'll leave this more on the blue side and I'm going to leave the whole image just feeling kind of cold and muted. In fact, I might even go back to my blues and I might even raise the blues a little bit. Okay. So I'm actually going to, let's delete that pin and just bring it all up a little bit. And we get this like, almost computer neutral tone, which looks incredible. And by the way, if we want to come up here and just like, okay, I want to take some of the saturation out. So it's like cold, but there's also some color there. It's like a little bit muted. And I love that. It almost feels like a black and white, but it's not a black and white. Cause if I actually black and white it, it looks completely different, right? So which let me actually create a legit black and white. So this would be an actual black and white. And that looks nothing at all like this color, this cold version of the image. Now we go over here and I'm like, okay, well, this is a little bit too intense, but I'm gonna do the same things. I'm gonna go down to first my hue and let's go into the skin tone, right? And let's shift the skin tone. And right now we're getting, basically everything is gonna be in this, uh, this red space, right? Because what we're doing is we've adjusted temperature first. So we have all these reds. So what I'm gonna do is actually shift those reds to a color palette that I kind of like a little bit more. I take it to about right here and I'm going to start pulling saturation out. Okay. And then we go for a completely different look and feel on this particular image. I might even darken this. I'm going to bring the yellows up. You can basically, when you're going this far in terms of the temperature and tint, you can basically reset everything out because all of your HSL adjustments will no longer really apply. I'm going to pull out some of the vibrance and the saturation. And look at this, a completely different look with that particular edit, right? So the fun thing about these stylized images, if I put the three of these side by side now, is that we, we kind of entered in with this idea of like, we're going to do this teal and sort of red look, this kind of contrasty color scheme for the image. We can stick with that, but we can also take it in completely different directions because we've applied specific colors to the image. We can manipulate those specific colors and get to very unique places with those stylized portraits. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys learned from it and you enjoyed, be sure to check out SR Lounge Premium. That's our place for A to Z education, literally on everything from picking up your camera to running a complete studio in wedding and portrait photography. It has all the education you need. In the meantime, I'd love to see you guys comment on this video. Let me know what you guys think, what you guys want to learn next. I, of course, actually read all of your comments. I do my best to reply and I get a lot of my ideas from the suggestions that you guys give. I'm going to be back here same time, same place next week. But in the meantime, we have awesome creators here on Adorama TV. If you guys want to be notified, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. So each and every day you're seeing what's hopping up and what's new on the channel, hopping up something like that. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.